Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Climate Fascism. The left-wing New Republic magazine has an article out titled, Climate Kings, how a new generation of authoritarian leaders are using climate change to seize power. The article starts out with, National crises make governments vulnerable to autocracy. Take the Maldives and a tall nation in the Indian Ocean. Rising seawater is projected to consume most, if not all, of the country this century. The basis of the article is that climate change is leading to fascism, when in fact it's the projection that's leading to fascism. And who's making the projection that the Maldives are going to drown? It's the leftists who are doing it. The way it works is leftists make a projection of climate change, Fascists use it as an excuse to seize power, and then the leftists blame the problem which they caused on imaginary climate change. Thirty years ago they projected that the Maldives would be completely gone within thirty years. That's now. Canberra Times, September 26, 1988. Threat to islands. Maldives. Sea level is threatening to completely cover this Indian Ocean nation of 1,196 small islands within the next 30 years, according to authorities. Well, all 1,196 islands were supposed to be gone by now, but none of them have actually disappeared, so they're batting zero out of 1,196, which I guess is close enough for government work. This forecast is quite the opposite of reality. In the real world, people are pouring tens of billions of dollars into the Maldives as investments. This obviously wouldn't be happening if the islands were drowning. You can spend almost 11 million pounds on a villa in the Maldives right now. This villa doesn't really look like it's drowning. So once again, what enabled this fascism was the projection of climate change. It wasn't actual climate change, which hasn't occurred. None of the Maldives islands are disappearing now, but in 1837, they were. February 1837, account of the Maldives. The natives observe the atolls to be wasting away, and some of the coconut trees are standing in the water. One atoll is entirely gone. Some islands have disappeared entirely. This story of the left enabling fascists seems pretty incredible, but there's really nothing new about it. Fascism was rampant among leftists during the 1930s. In 1933, George Rundale, a bishop of the liberal Catholic Church, as described by Wikipedia, said, We have Mussolini, we have Hitler, we have Roosevelt, as outstanding men. He wrote an article on June 14, 1933, titled Mussolini, Hitler, Roosevelt, The New Spirit in Democracy. In this article, without attribution, he cited what he called a very fine pronouncement, all shall serve the state and none the faction. Well, this was the credo of the British Union of Fascists. And he ended the article by saying that Mussolini, Hitler, and Roosevelt all love little children. This is how leftists viewed the world in 1933. Happy children surrounded by armed SS officers ready to kill them if they stepped out of line. But this was the real world outside of the mind of leftists. Children in concentration camps. There was nothing unusual about Arundel's beliefs. They were the standard beliefs of leftists in 1933. August 28, 1933, the Baltimore Sun. Throughout Germany, there is a general sentiment that the outstanding personages of the world are President Roosevelt, Hitler, and Mussolini. Everywhere there is a feeling of optimism. Hitler obviously is preparing the nation for a return of the monarchy. The Baltimore Sun actually wrote that. But the really telling part of the article is at the bottom. Professors back Hitler. I found the intellectuals, the professors in the colleges and universities supporting Hitler. In 1931, a hundred of Germany's top academics wrote an article, 100 authors against Einstein, based on the fact that he was Jewish. On December 31st, 1933, the left-wing Lincoln, Nebraska Journal described Roosevelt, Hitler, and Mussolini as great men. And leftists were doing the same thing all around the world. In Bulgaria, they were modeling their policies after Roosevelt, Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini. On October 11, 1933, the Medford, Oregon Mail Tribune described Roosevelt, Hitler, and Mussolini as men of action, of energy, doers! Exclamation mark. 
The left has always enabled fascists, and they're doing it again with climate change. The ridiculous predictions are allowing authoritarian leaders to seize power. No matter how much misery left has caused in the world, they refuse to take responsibility for their actions. Instead, they rewrite history and blame fascism on the right. Fascism has always been a left-wing venture, with climate fascism just the latest incarnation of it. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.